All right, all right, all right. Welcome everybody to Redstone Week Day 2. Today I have a very special and unique invention to show you. This is a single block combination lock. Um, so you'll see here if I just randomly flick a few levers, uh, flick some of them up and down, uh, let's just do something like this, uh, flick that, flick that. You'll see that the door does not open, but if I input the correct combination, uh, which just happens to be that one, there we go, you'll see that the door does indeed open, uh, but if you have the wrong combination, so say if I do that, the door does not open. So, to my knowledge, this is the first uh, single block combination lock in survival, and yeah, you might be wondering now how I get four different signals from the same block. Well, let's go down and take a look at the redstone and find out. So it all has to do with um, yeah, basic clock here and activator rails, which uh, update the piston. Um, so it allows me to basically control each piston individually. So you'll see when I flick that lever down, the white piston goes down. Flick this lever down the uh, piston next to the lime green wall goes down. So you can toggle pistons individually and it actually works through the floor here, you'll see. Um, so yeah, you don't actually have to have uh, these levers uh, right on the block the piston is on or anything uh, due to the activator rail uh, trick. So not many people know about that, but it's super useful and allows you to do cool stuff like this. Um, and you can also do stuff like if I got a half slab for instance put these down like so just like that you can see it still works here so yeah you can still uh, use it with half slabs or without half slabs and it also is useful because you can actually lock this really easily just put down a piece of redstone dust and now uh, no matter what combination is entered so you see we have the right combination in here uh, no matter what combination is entered you uh, you can't open the door okay so this version of the combination lock has 16 different possible combinations uh, that can be used to open the door but only one will open it however you can expand this design into something like this and this design has 65,556 possible combinations, so 2 to the power of 16. So there's no possible way you could pretty much ever guess what the combination is unless you knew it uh, firsthand. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out the combination for this. Uh, this one works pretty much in the exact same way as that one, just scaled up. So basically how this works is any block down here with a torch on it is a uh, block that you need to flick the lever on. So in this case we have white wool and lime green wool that we need to turn on. So white wool and lime green wool, flick those down, make sure all the other levers are up. And here we have lime green and blue. So lime green and blue. Orange, this one is down so we need that up. Alright. Next one here, we have lime green and white. So, lime green and white. Fantastic. And then this last one here, we have orange, white, and lime green. So, we have three on this one. So, orange, white, and lime green. All right, there we go. Sweet. It worked. Okay. So, yeah, that is the... Uh, single block combination lock. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh, build it here. I'll go ahead and show you how to build the four uh, version one, the 65,000 combo one, because uh, this one is the most secure. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. Okay, everyone, first thing you want to do is select a 10 by 10 area to build this in. Obviously, if you're building a smaller one, it'll be a smaller area. But come to the leftmost corner, come in one, two, three blocks, and over one, two, this block here will be where you place your levers. Then come over one, two, three, four, and on the fifth one, place another block. Uh, that will also be a place where you put levers. Come out five more blocks, and then five more blocks on that side. So you should have 
a square that looks a little bit like that. Then go ahead and drop on down here. Place levers on the sides of all of these, just like so. So you should have 16 levers in all. So just like this, and like that. Okay. Okay, at this point I do suggest you go ahead and put item frames uh, on the same block as your levers. This just helps to differentiate um, each lever from the other. And I would go ahead and put some wool in there. So the convention I use is I put white wool on the lever uh, facing this direction. And then uh, green wool on this side. Blue wool on this side. And then orange wool on this side. And you can see it does show up just a little bit glitchy in some of those. But yeah, I do that for all of the levers. Okay, next up we're going to go ahead and place the pistons. So come on down here and find your uh, special blocks here. So they should be five blocks apart, just like that. All right. And then go ahead and place pistons on the underside of the blocks that are beneath the levers. So sticky pistons facing down everywhere like this. Same thing on this side. Just like that. Right there. And then on this side as well. Then go ahead and take redstone blocks, place redstone blocks on the bottom side of each and every sticky piston. And you can also go ahead and fill in the gap here. Uh, you don't really need that anymore, so just go ahead and fill a block inside of there. Just like that. Next up we're going to put a piece of wool next to each redstone block that is controlled by a piston above it. So we'll place one wool there, place a white wool there. I'm just going to go ahead and color coordinate these as well so I know which piston is which. Uh, so that's the white done. We'll have the orange on this side and on this side. Have blue here, there, there, and there. And then lastly we'll have green there and there and also here and here. So there's our wool placed. Now what you want to do is you want to grab an activator rail and on top of all the wool blocks you just placed, go ahead and place activator rails. So each and every wool block gets one. Make sure I got all these in here. There we are. One there, one there, and one there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the actual circuit. I would recommend, if you haven't done this uh, before or understand how it works, to go ahead and just get rid of all these blocks here uh, on the ground level of where your build will be. It just makes it a lot easier to yeah, visualize what is happening here. So just go ahead and do that now. Okay, so what you want to do now is if you're looking at your build straight on like this, you want to come to the back right-hand corner here. And from this orange block here, come out one, two blocks, and put a button on this block. That'll be how you start the system. Uh, you could also use this, if you didn't want a clock, you could have this uh, basically so that if you hit a button, it will um, check for the correct code. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just, yeah, don't hook up one of the repeaters, and I'll show you which one. Then you want to come on down here with a block, put a repeater going into this uh activator rail here. Then you want to have a block on this side with some dust on it. And you'll have this go into block like that. Come on to the other side here. Have a repeater on four ticks going into a block. And then another repeater on four ticks. And that will go into a block on this side with dust, block, block, and then repeater on four ticks. And then this repeater right here is the one you would want to omit if you wanted just a button signal to check the code, but a repeater on four ticks there if you're making the clock. So now you should see, if you hit this button, you should see a clock start to check all the activator rails there. So if you see that, Good job, we're ready to move on to the next circuit. Okay, so for this one, you want to come out here, uh, grab a block here, and bring it over to uh, this point right here, and just have some dust there. 
can have a repeater. Actually, let's have a just dust going into there. And then we'll have a block like this with a repeater on four ticks right there. Block up like that. Another repeater here on four ticks. And then just have some blocks come around like so. And yeah, just connect these up with some dust like that. And that is now done. And you should see when you hit the button that this should pulse as that clock goes around. So that will continually check for levers pulled with this uh, block. Okay, next up we're going to do the circuit surrounding this block here. So what we'll do is we'll take the signal from this block here, since this activator rail is already being uh, updated, or powered I should say. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just take a uh, block out like this, and we'll lead this into this block here. Then we'll take the signal out of that block there with a repeater. Bring this signal over here like this. And then we'll have another uh, repeater right here. That will lead into a block. And then that will go into a block like that with dust on it. So you'll see all these rails uh, connected to this block are now being powered at some point. And we're ready to do the final circuit now. So for the final one, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the signal from this block here and update these final two rails. So just come on down like this, put some blocks down like so, dust there and there, you'll see that powers that. Then we'll have a repeater coming out of here on four ticks, and that will lead directly into this activator rail, just like that. So now go ahead and check all of your pistons, uh, it may take a brief second or two for them to extend, but make sure you can flick down um, a lever on each of these blocks. And yeah, you can see it's working here. So that's what you want to see. And yeah, we are done with the circuit now. You can go ahead and place down your floor once again now. Uh, and get rid of this button as well. Okay, next up we're going to come down beneath the uh, redstone blocks here. We're going to come down one, two, three blocks. And place dust on top of that block. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and color coordinate with the blocks above here. So lime green will go here and some dust right here. Blue will go right here. So this just again tells me which levers are being pulled. And then we'll have orange right here. And we'll do this for each and every one of uh, these sets of redstone blocks. So again just come down three blocks, destroy the top two, dust on there. Down three blocks, destroy the top two, dust on there. Down three blocks, destroy the top two, dust on there. And then same with this lime green, destroy the top two, dust on there. And then do this for the other two as well. Okay, so now you should see something that looks sort of like this. And now you're going to decide where you want your output. I'm going to have mine here at the back here. So come two blocks over from this orange block and two blocks down. You'd want your output on this uh, level, but you can have it on any side really. Then put dust on top of that, torch on there, and now you start coding in your combination. So we're going to code in this one first here. So we want the code on this one to be um, green, white, and orange. So put a torch on green, torch on white, and a torch on orange. And then we're going to draw this line back here, put dust on it. And then we don't want um, blue to be part of the code, so we need to have blue power this whenever it's powered. So go ahead and come on down here, do something like this, just like so, and then put dust on top like that. Very nice. And now you can go ahead and test it, and you can see that torch is off right now. Uh, if we go ahead and select a blue, you can see that there is no change in the output of the torch but if we flick blue up so that we have the correct combination of green orange and white you will see that the torch does indeed come on so this thing is working for this block right here next up we'll code the combination for this one here so come on down here 
We want this one to be green and white as the combination. So green and white with torches on them. And we'll run this line down like so. And then put redstone dust underneath here, just like that. And then we don't want um, blue and orange to be part of the combination. So just come on down like this. Dust there, and that's that one done. Next up, we'll go ahead and do this one here. And keep in mind, this is the that's the front over there. So we'll go ahead and do green and white again on this one. So green and white with torches on it. And we'll come down below here. And yeah, just make this go over like so. Just like this. And then dust all the way along like that. Very nice. And then we'll just go ahead and hook up uh, this orange and blue line as well down here like this and all we need is redstone dust on top like that to make that work and lastly here we'll go ahead and do this far one right there and we want to hook up blue and green for this one so let's go ahead and place blue and green down like that come down below it then just draw the line over just like so and then you'll just have some dust like that and then this white and orange line we obviously don't want this to uh, be part of the combination so just bring this line down like this down like this and then over like this with some dust all along like that there we go so the only thing left to do is to take this torch output here and make it do something so we'll come down uh, one and over two we'll go ahead and place down some dust like this go ahead and go up here come out one more and then do a sort of a torch tower up like this all the way until we get almost to the top here so there we go go ahead and place down two blocks here might as well fill in the area around here and we'll go ahead and place down a door uh, let's see we're on this block I believe go ahead and place a door frame down and okay we can go ahead and test it out now so uh, for this one, yes, yeah, so this is the default state here. So for this one, we have green, white, and orange. This one, we have green and white, I believe. So green and white. This one is green and blue. And this one is, let's see, white and green. So white and green. Ta-da! Okay, so it does indeed work, and you'll see if you flick down any other lever here, you'll see it'll instantly close. It doesn't matter which one. If it's off by just one, it will close uh, no matter what. And of course, if you wanted to lock one of these, um, just go ahead and place that down. And now, no matter what combination is input, you cannot open the door. Okay, so then real quickly here, I just want to show you how you can do the button check if you don't want a constantly running clock. Um, so go ahead and get rid of this repeater right here and this block and get rid of the button there. Put a dust on top of what was the button block. Then go ahead and run redstone line out like this. And then just run it back like that. And so your button will go right here. You can go ahead and fill redstone into all the blocks you just placed. So, whoops, let me get up here. Just do something like this. Fill in your wall like so. And then make sure you have the correct code. Um, so we have green and white, green and white, or sorry, green and blue. Uh, green and white there, and then white, green, and orange here. So we got it. Hit the button. Ta-da! Okay, and then of course, you know, if you had the wrong code, uh, you'll see there you have the wrong code. Uh, let's just flick a f couple of levers up and down here, test it. Nope. Okay, so that's how you do the non-clock version of the build. So you can have a clock version or non-clock version. I sort of prefer the clock version here because it's more like real time, but uh, yeah. It's up to you. Anyway, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Hopefully you're enjoying Redstone Week. Please let me know in the comments. And that's going to be all for me today. So thank you very much for watching. This has been CubFan. Goodbye.